Hi, in this video we're going to look at how to approximate the mean of a frequency distribution or a histogram. Um, sometimes we need to find what the mean is, but we don't have the actual data. Remember that a histogram doesn't preserve the actual data points, so we don't know. Although we know that there are 28 points that fall in this range, we do not know how many of them are, say, 65 or 64. Um, so with this, what we can do is we can approximate the mean by using a formula that is very, very similar to the weighted mean formula that I have done in previous videos. Um, for this one, X represents the midpoint of each of the categories. Um, F represents the frequency of that particular category. Um, and N is the sum of all of the frequencies. So if you have to do hand calculations with this, what you would do is you would set up a table and you would start by labeling one for midpoint and one for the frequency and then you would have a third column where you do X which is the midpoint times the frequency okay um, so what we would do is we would just look down here this is where we would get our midpoints from um, if they did lower class limits, then you would take your lower class limit plus the upper class limit and divide it by two to get the midpoint. In this case, they gave us the midpoint. Um, so I would use 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, and 85. And then under the frequencies, we would just take the number at the top. So in this case, for 55, there were two of them. For 60, there were 15. For the 65, we have 28. 70, 42. 75, we have 30. 80, we have 20. And for 85, we have six. So then for this column here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the calculator to help me find that so that I don't have to go each through of the individual calculations. So to do that, I'm going to hit stat and edit. And you could do this just as easily. If you use the inspire, you would just um, open a spreadsheet screen and put midpoint in one column, frequency in the other column. Um, and then you would pretty much do the same thing. So let me clear this information out. And so I have 55. 60, 65, 70, 80, and 85. And then I would go to the next column and put in the frequencies. So the 2, 15. You do want to make sure that everything um, matches up because if you enter it in incorrectly, then you will have problems. Okay, so we put our information into here, and then what we're going to do is go to L3. Um, if you were using the TI Inspire, you would um, also go to a third list that you could just name as XF. Um, and then in the little screen in between, you would just do equals, and then do whatever your variables are times your variable. You basically do the exact same thing that I'm doing here. Um, you would just go to an equal screen instead of highlighting at the top. So I'm going to highlight at the top of this. I do want to make sure that I got the data in correctly, that I didn't make any mistakes as I was putting it in. All right, so in L3, instead of, like I said, individually going through and multiplying all of those, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit second, the number one, and notice that it's putting L1 down here, and I'm going to do times L2. Um, they do have to have the same number of rows in each of them, so if you are mismatched, you will get an um, error saying dim dimension mismatch, and then it automatically fills in all of your products. So for the first one, we have 110, 900. 1820, 2940, six, sorry, 2250, 1600, and then the last one is 510. Okay. 
Um, so to find, or to use our formula to find the um, approximate mean of this distribution, we would first sum this column to get our n. This would give us our n in the bottom. Okay, instead of adding up all of those individually, since we used our calculator to help us, what we would do is we would um, go to our lists, do second list and go over to math, and we're going to hit the sum, and we want to do the sum, remember that we put our frequencies in L2, and so that gives me 143. So if I added up all of these frequencies, I had 143 total adults in here that were in my sample. Okay, um, we would also do the same thing for this one. We would find the sum of x times f. So instead of adding up all of those individually, we would take the sum of this column. So again, what you can do is you can go up and just grab this and then change the L2. We could change this to second L3 and then hit enter and it gives us 100 and, or sorry, 10,130. And so then to find the average mean, the x bar, we could say x bar is equal to or is approximately 10,130 divided by 143, which is approximately 70.84. And if you look at this, since this is roughly symmetric, um, anytime you have something that's roughly symmetric, your mean should be in the center column. And in this case, that was centered at 70, and 70.84 is very close to being centered at 70. So that makes sense for our answer. Um, anytime you have a bell-shaped distribution, the mean is in the middle, as well as the median and the mode. They're all approximately the same. Um, for this, if you remember, or if you watched my other TI-84 um, video on how to find the weighted mean, um, I could show you, this was showing you out the hand calculation so that if you needed all of the work, what you could do. Um, but if you didn't have to show the work and you just wanted the weighted mean, you can just go to the second calculate, the one bar stats. Remember that our midpoint or our list was L1, our frequency list was L2, and if we hit calculate 70.839 or 70.84 is what we got for the average mean. Um, so that was done much quicker. The calculator did all of this math for us instantaneously. As always, thanks for watching.